Hey everyone, Kim with Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with another work with me, walk with me uh, sort of video where I plan the weekend's events. Uh, before I dive into the video, I just wanted to show off a book that I picked up at that one estate sale that I've mentioned several times. So this book, I thought it was just a cookbook when I got it, and it's a book of recipes, and it was funny, I was looking through it, because I like to look through all the different books that I get, and I realized this thing doesn't just have recipes for food stuff, it also has stuff like, oh, you can make lacquers, you can butcher animals, you can make a huge litany of explosives, like this thing has like literally every single one. I'll probably be doing a video on uh, this in the future, but it's from 1895 and it has so much really cool stuff. And for me, I'm a history nerd and one of the things that I thought was extra cool about this book was it has a recipe on how to make Greek fire. And Greek fire, for those of you that don't know, it's a fire uh, implement that was used in wars during uh, Rome, basically, and up into the early Middle Ages, and then it was basically lost with the fall of Constantinople and around then. All that sort of stuff, I mean, that was years ago when people say that the recipe was lost to the ages and no one knows how to make it now, and it's funny, this one here has a recipe, and it's not a recipe that I've heard people bring forward yet, so it's like, oh, that's something I might want to test myself, because that's pretty cool, so I'll be testing out Greek fire at some point in the future. It has nothing to do with books, but... It was in this book, so it sort of does. So, with all that said and done, though, guys, let's just hop into the screen share. So, uh, as we could see here, uh, no one voted on this uh, video on where they wanted to have it, which is fine by me. It just means I get to do it wherever I want to do. And honestly, guys, I uh, sort of wanted to do this video on where I live this week because there was actually some pretty cool sales that I checked out um, online yesterday or the day before so uh, with all that said I'm actually just gonna hop on over and start doing this search for my own area this week so uh, if you guys do want to have me do it in your area be sure to vote uh, there's a link down in the description on how to vote for this it's pretty easy just click where you want or you can add your own poll option when you want to do it so you can just add in your own city or city near you if that's what you want to do so again no one did it this week so I get to do it where I want to do it so uh, I wasn't really expecting on doing it where I was, but because there were some cooler ones by me, I was like, oh, I gotta do this. So I'm just opening up estatesales.net, statesales.org, and Friends of the Library uh, book sale finder for the Friends of the Library sales. So let's just look right here. It looks like, um, well, first off, what weekend are we doing? So we are doing the weekend of the 22nd to the 23rd. Of course, we're gonna have some wiggle room on that because that's how it works. So let's look at the ones that are going on. We have one in Florida, that's not by me, but we have one in Portland. So the Portland one, guys, I went to this once. Um, I believe I went to this one, actually. Uh, I have not been to this one. Oh, that's exciting. Um, I have been to this Portland sale. Uh, this Portland sale, guys, uh, I went to it. I didn't like it whatsoever. They charged too much for the books. There were too many people there, and where they had it, I didn't like whatsoever. Uh, it's in a place called Lloyd Center. Uh, well, actually, just around Lloyd Center. Um, it's the hotel by it. And it's a nice hotel and all, but I just don't like driving to Portland. All the other Portland booksellers were here for this one. So because of that, I had to go through a lot of competition. All the prices were higher because of that. All that sort of stuff. And in addition to that, like, I, it's Portland's just not safe anymore for people. So I don't plan on going to that one. But this one, I have not been to. I don't even know where this is. So, uh... Yeah, absolutely zero idea where this is. So I'm actually going to look up where this one is and see if it's worth going to this weekend. Not saying I'm going to make it to these things because, as I said, I that estate sale, guys. I'm looking at all the books. I still have them over there. I'm still filing through them all. Uh, it was a very big sale that I already went to and am still working through, so I probably won't go to this one, but I might. Uh, it looks like children books are a dollar. All others are two bucks. So I'm thinking this book is more towards Portland, and the fact that it says Portland definitely <laughs> makes me think that as well. Um, but let's just see where it is, so I'm just going to copy all of this, going to paste it here, just to see where it is on the maps. Because after all, <laughs> knowing where something is might be a little bit important, and as you guys know, I don't like driving too deep into Portland or into Portland at all if I don't have to, and this one, it it's not in the worst part of Portland, which is like more downtowny. it's still too lame for where I want to go, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting area. Portland Jewish Academy. Um, yeah, that's the right place. So, 16,000 books. If I wasn't a big Portlandophobe, I would definitely go to this because it's a pretty nice area. Uh, not area. A good amount of books. That's like 16,000 books. I mean, you're going to find a lot of good books there. Uh, for me, in addition to just not liking Portland, all the other booksellers are 
probably going to go to this one because a lot of the ones that I've spoken to, they live around this area or um, let me just show you guys. So a lot of them live around this area. A lot of them live in Beaverton. A lot of them live in downtown Portland, obviously, because so many people there. Uh, Northeast Portland, like basically this entire, let me just circle it for you guys. Uh, this entire area is stuff that I don't really like going to because there are so many other resellers and that's just a lot more competition, which means I'm going to have to pay a lot more for books if I want to get the books. And uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of these people, they don't like going to Rockwood and Rockwood, uh, which is part of Gresham starts around what's the street come on show me there we go uh, 122nd it starts more on 82nd Street which is I'm gonna say oh yeah right here um, which is gives me a whole lot of leeway for myself because that means I have basically let's just say the freeway all the way over it's all my land whereas everything to the the west of that is all there so it's like oh they can do all this I'll take everything else because they don't go there there's a lot of good stuff still and it's mine so uh that's all of that so personally i won't be going to this one if you guys live in portland area it could be worth going to but something i've never seen before for a sale is you have to show your id before entering the building i've never seen that one um because it's a jewish community center i'm sure it's not for the reason that i'm about to say but i could totally imagine that happening if it was in a bar but this isn't a bar this is a jewish community center so i'm not sure what the id is for but you never know it's interesting. Uh, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, which makes sense that they don't do it on Saturday because that's uh, Sabbat or Sabbath, depending on how you want to say it. So that makes sense that they don't have it then. That's actually sort of neat. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool sale. Honestly, I wish it wasn't in Portland because I would go to it because it's pretty cool, but um, not going to happen. So uh, no book sale this week. So on to the estatesales.org and .net. So just going to enter in my zip code there and going to do the same over here. So as you guys can see, I have a very large circle set up. I'm not going to actually change the circle from 100 miles because I normally am willing to drive that far for a lot of things, unless of course if it's in Portland, which is just a couple of miles. But uh, anything further than that, I'm normally game. So let's just hop right on into it, guys. So here's quite a few of them, a lot of them. And as I said earlier, I already looked at a couple of these and guys, I was really stoked for a couple of them. I was like, oh, Ooh, oh, whoa! I thought it was really, excuse me, funny to go to. Um, this one right here, as you guys can see here, it has just like a little stock photo -y house right there, which is a red flag because that means that the people haven't taken photos yet. Uh, same with this one, but I'm still going to open it up because maybe they somehow had it so it didn't do that. I don't know. Uh, looks like we have a ton and a half of estate sales right now, though, so this is pretty neat. Um, Oh, I just clicked this one. This one isn't by me. <laughs> okay, so with all that said, I'm just hopping right on into things, though. Uh, it's going to be a little bit slow because I opened up way too many tabs. I feel like an old person doing that, but here we are. Uh, this one's an auction, I believe. Uh, yeah, online estate sale, so basically an auction. Just scrolling through really quick. I don't think I saw any houses. houses. <laughs> I don't think I saw any books when I was doing this one, but I'm just going through really quick. Yeah, no, uh, no books here, so that's nice and simple. On to this next one. Uh, forgive me as it takes a little bit of load. Oh, that's really interesting. I have not seen them do a video on any of these before. Honestly, that's really smart. I'm tempted to watch that video on my own just because of that, but just scrolling through this one really quick. Uh, this is the one that I'm pretty sure I was really excited about. So I will definitely be uh, talking about this one in a little bit, but I'm just going to finish going through all the other ones first, just so we can sort of get an idea of what all we're looking at this weekend. So uh, going through, going through, here's some more books. So I'm going to set that one aside as well. On to this next one, going through really quick. Got some jewelry, which is nice. Got some Federal Reserve notes. So let's see anything special about these. 999, oh, okay, so it's just a normal guy uh, with the A's series. So um, the only reason why I know any of this is because I like stacking gold, silver, all that sort of stuff, and I keep an eye out for some bills because some of the people that I uh, learn from, they like collecting bills, so I know a couple things about these. So these bills are definitely somewhat valuable, but not so much that I'd want to go to the sale over them. And on top of that, I'm not really interested in paper. I'm interested in metal because metal is what money is. It's not, not paper. Uh, on to this next one, we got some metal. A lot, a lot of metal. Oh, poo. 
coins and classics state sale washuga washington okay um might be tempted to go to this one i i know i shouldn't because i don't need to spend this money but ah that's a beautiful collection uh these are some really stunning pieces from all over the years so 1944 so interesting thing about 1944 is the reason why you see silver coins of this and not gold coins from this time is because they actually uh stopped allowing people from owning gold because the government wanted gold at the time and didn't want people to have that sort of power for themselves um got some books here so we'll be hopping back to this one soon uh looks like we just have one shelf of books though from what i can see so i'm just going to oops just going to open this one up in another tab so we can just check it out right now so open image and new tab the reason why you have to do that is they don't really let you zoom in on your own otherwise so just looking at this we have a set of books here i want to say it looks like national geographic uh, i can't be certain based on the pixelatedness but i believe national geographic are the ones that have the yellow uh, spines there we have a couple sets of books here which i would definitely be picking up if i went to this one this here looks like a set of books because they're all around the same height the colors sort of are complementary so i'd say those are probably set but uh, not too many books that look too old. Maybe a couple on this top shelf are from, from the early 1900s, like up to the mid-1900s. But nothing too amazingly old in this shelf. So uh, if I went to this one, I would definitely check out the shelf because I'm there. But um, I don't know if I'd actually go to this estate sale for that now. For the medals, maybe. But uh, definitely don't know if I will be because I'm very busy with all these sorts of things going on guys man all those books that I bought you guys have no idea how much work that is Oy. unless of course you've been doing this for a couple of years uh, on to this next estate sale though just going through really quick uh, I would say these people probably have at least two dozen books based on all the stuff they have people that collect stuff generally have some books yeah here we go a lot of books I was thinking they'd have a lot of children books based on all the collections they have of children's stuff but um didn't want to say it prematurely okay we got a lot of books now that's really nice so i'm going to set this one aside also for us to go through in a few shakes once i finish it um on to this next one going through all right we got flashed once uh, excuse me for a second as i write that down so i know how to censor it so 1009 going a little further got some cookbooks here so guys uh, about cookbooks uh, I'm sure you guys can see in the corner right here I have a little stack of cookbooks I also have one there there and I have several stacks right in front of me these are all cookbooks that I just got at this one estate sale that I've mentioned a few times uh, they aren't worth a whole lot but I'm in, I'm basically testing out cookbooks in general right now just to see how I like selling them I've sold sets of cookbooks cookbooks before so here's a set right here it's uh, five books Here's another set, um, let me just look. Uh, it looks like that's 14 books in that set. I have a set right here. I don't know if you guys could see this one. This one's 18 books. So I have quite a few sets and I have done very well with cookbook sets before, but I haven't done lots of cookbooks. I won't be selling any of these individually. I'll be selling them as lots, but I haven't done that before, but I've heard great things about it from uh, Back From Burnout, Mel. She's said good things about it. So I will be testing that out just because of what she said. Uh, based on my own research of it, I see there's definitely some good money in it. I paid 50 cents per book for this. So it's going to have a good uh, return no matter basically what I sell it at because I'm going to make more than 50 cents on these books regardless so that's just a quick aside there but back to this one um, I won't be returning to this one just because of how I got flashed I don't want to censor that again but uh, we saw some cookbooks we saw some children's books I'm actually going to scroll up a little bit so the cookbooks here they don't look like too too valuable of ones but uh, definitely could be be worth doing uh, the children's books I saw I did see some older ones but again I don't want to get flashed again so I'm just gonna exit out of this one so on to this next one um, this one's in Omsville Oregon which I actually have no idea where that is um, let me just Oregon 22nd hmm along the freeway so I'm thinking this is by Salem but it's a little hard to really tell yeah, it says it's from a state sale company in Salem, so I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, so that's around Salem area. Um, should be east of it, if that's sublimity. So um, definitely don't want to drive that far this weekend, and there's no photos of Fort, so just skipping over this one. But uh, there definitely could be some good stuff. Uh, sometimes they just tell you what kind of stuff is here, so I don't see anything talking about the stuff that's here, though. So, eh. Um, 
that's interesting. Bring your own help and tools. What kind of tools do you need to move stuff? I don't know. But uh, onto this one, long view consignment auction. So it's an auction. As I've said in other video guy videos, guys, I don't like auctions. Um, gonna censor that one out. So 1011. Sorry. After last week, guys, I got excited. I was thinking we weren't gonna get flashed again. That, that's definitely not the case. Uh, got some comic books here. I don't do comic books. Uh, I've sold a couple in the past. They just don't do very well for me, though. I don't make enough money for what it, effort it takes. Uh, this next estate sale, no photos. So uh, just looking at description, don't see anything about books, but there probably are books, but they don't mention it, so I can't go there because I don't know. On to this next one, though. A uh, lot of stuff. Pretty red boots. Uh, going a little further. I think these carving sets are interesting because I've seen quite a few carving sets at different estate sales. Uh, going a little further, got a safe. Uh, honestly, guys, if you guys can get a safe for your business, it could definitely be worth it because uh, just think about it. If someone breaks into your business and they actually know something about books, they might grab your really val valuable ones and run. Um, honestly, that's probably not going to happen because a lot of people that... Uh, are going to break in your house won't know books because books are a very uh, niche topic to know but for me personally I actually did buy a safe for my uh, book business um, but back on to the thing about people stealing books so there are actually I believe it's in Iran they actually have uh, giant book markets and they don't put away their books at the end of the day they leave them out in the open and they have a common saying and it's uh, readers don't steal and thieves don't read basically that's uh, the gist of it and the entire reasoning for all that is they know they can leave their books out because if you're a reader you're not you're not gonna steal the books and if you're a thief you're not gonna steal the books because you're not gonna read the books and I just think that's a really clever sort of funny thing and it's a nice insult for thieves that don't read and it might influence them to read and do something with their lives so with that said um, I don't think a safe is too necessary for your business, but it definitely could be a nice addition. So I don't see any books in this sale, so on to this next one. Uh, we've got a lot of sales this weekend, so that's pretty cool, guys. Uh, no photos for this one. That's a bummer. Uh, with it being Northeast Portland, so PDX, that's our airport, so people say Portland with PDX. Uh, Northeast PDX, I do have a lot of uh, success with that area uh, for getting some good books. Uh, it's some of, some of a wealthier area, so you do have to pay more for the books, but there are definitely some good ones. Uh, of course, there are a lot of people there that don't read whatsoever, so that's a little bit of a bummer, but eh, it happens. So uh, here's one of the estate sales that I looked at. I don't remember if there were any books here, but there were some cool things that I was like, hmm, I might go there for myself because there's some pretty neat things that I actually like. So like World War II bombers and lots of old cars. It's like, man, that'd be fun to just go to. Uh, didn't even notice this winch. Honestly, guys, I could use a winch for my gold mine when I do that. And I was also looking at the ATV. I was like, oh, if I can get a good deal on that ATV, because again, with my gold mine that I'm working on starting, there's a lot of equipment that I need. And it's like, ooh, some good stuff here, but no books. So I'm not talking about that in this video. So on this next one, Vancouver. So Vancouver is just north of Portland. It's I do have to drive into Portland a little bit because we have to go over a bridge, but um, it's not so terrible that I won't go. So got some, it looks like DVDs over here, but it could be books. So I don't, here's some books. None of the books look too old, but let's open up this one. Excuse me, this one really quick, just to be sure. Um, open image, a new tab. Yeah, we're not gonna get a good photo of that. So uh, don't think this estate sale has anything too exciting for us. Again, these books on this shelf don't look too nice for what I'm interested in. Uh, there definitely could be ones that are worth $30. Uh, I would say a couple of them are definitely worth $30, but for me, I'm not interested in new books that are worth 30 bucks. I'm old, interested in old books that are worth a whole lot. Like uh, this one that I mentioned earlier is worth about 50 bucks. I have a couple over there that I'll be making another video on right after I'm done making this video. I'll release it probably tomorrow or the next day, but I uh, got some really cool books over there that just sold that I think you guys would be interested in, and it has a pretty cool story with it. Well, not pretty cool, an informative story. Uh, but again, that's not what this video is about, so nothing here for this one. Uh, I actually thought this was a, like a lectern or a, um, yeah, just a lectern, but that looks like it's a cat house play toy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so not interested in that. Tigard, so that's uh, Portland side. I don't normally go to Tigard because 
Taggart's the whole thing with Portland. So no description, no photos. So not worth going to for me just yet. Um, Northwest Portland. Northwest Portland is one that I personally have more success with. I drive to Northwest Portland sometimes uh, if I have to because I have a lot more luck with those things. So masks are recommended. So it's going to be one of those things. Guys, people still wear masks over here and they still force you to. It's the worst thing ever. Uh, but no sign up. Uh, so I would expect that this might have some good things. So some books, nothing too exciting. Uh, if you guys saw, it says that there is a minimum bid. So I think this is an auction. So personally, I'm not too interested in it anyways. Um, just going through really quick though. Okay, we got some books. Uh, a couple of these look nice, so I'll be doubling back here. Okay, that's it for the sale. So just looking right here. So newer books, newer books. All these are newer books. Um, a couple of them do look like they could have been older, like this black one. It definitely could be older than the rest, but like this red one, you might think it's a little older, but I'm basing off of the uh, white color of the pages. That's a very white new page book, uh, page book, page uh, color. When a book is older, obviously its pages will yellow. In addition to that, um, over the years, we have actually changed the paper that we use in our books. So um, I don't have any good examples of that right now, sorry. But uh, over the past, I want to say two decades, so like 20 years ago, we moved towards uh, from like white pages to like ultra white and then we moved from that to like ultra ultra white and uh, back in the day though they just used white paper because it was like fine they got the job done but uh, over the years people have just wanted whiter and whiter paper for some reason so if you see a book with really really white pages that's going to be a newer book it's not going to be an old one because older ones even if it doesn't have like really yellowed pages from age it's going to be yellower just because they didn't have the ultra white uh pages because it just wasn't worth the time for them back then so on this next one uh salem and it's got a whole bunch of cool stuff got an engine uh nice old car 1924 star interesting never heard of that car uh going through though actually i might have heard the heard of the star now that i think about it but going through going through got some cool old bottles uh creepy clown what's a sale without a creepy clown guys oh <laughs> It's funny how many creepy clowns you guys could see as you do this business. It's like, who collects these things? You guys are psychos. Uh, so a couple cookbooks, some other things. And we have a cool set of books here. So I'm just going to open this up just to see if I can try to... Okay, so Zane Gray. I've actually sold like three Zane Gray books over the years. Uh, I actually just bought... Do I have those by me? I don't have them... They're just over there, just out of reach. Uh, I actually bought a boatload of Zane Grey books that I'm trying to sell for like a little over 100 bucks, and I think I have like 20 some of them. Uh, I've been trying to sell that for a little while, haven't sold them yet, so I don't know the actual value of Zane Grey books. Um, I know there's a lot of people selling them on eBay, but I haven't had much luck selling them just yet, but Zane Grey is definitely an author that you guys could keep an eye out for. Uh, I've had some luck, as I said, selling his stuff. Uh, this particular set as you guys can see, it's the white bottom blue title area. Uh, I've had some pretty good luck selling those in the past. Um, I've sold a few of them. I haven't sold the whole set, but I've seen this set can be worth a good chunk. So that would be worth going to and buying if you guys were in the Salem area. For me, I'm not driving all the way to Salem for this set, uh, but it could be worth going to for you guys. So going a little further, I don't see anything too exciting. Uh, belt buckle, cool knife. Ooh, guys, some rocks. <laughs> Uh, going a little further though, that was a joke about the rocks guys. I mean, I, I like rocks, but <laughs> I'm not going to an estate sale to buy some rocks. I'll just go outside, thank you. Going a little further though, uh, I don't see any books, just lots and lots of tools, some wire, was that bailing wire probably? A little further, nothing too exciting. Uh, okay, the cute elk or reindeer makes up for the creepy clown, I think. Uh, Elvis, so Elvis stuff can be worth a lot of money or it can be worth uh, basically nothing. Looks like potentially a gun safe here. A um, little further though, I don't see anything too fancy for books. Uh, here's some, but none of them look too valuable, so on to this next sale. Going through really quick, it looks like it's an auction, yeah, bidding. So just going through, real what is that? Is that like a candelabra or something? Uh, going, going, going. It's funny all the stuff that you guys see and it's just like I have no idea what this is so nothing too exciting here um, that's cool looking though on to the next one arrivals in Centralia 
so that's a little ways away from me, but could be worth going to if it had stuff, but it doesn't, and it's an auction, and as I've said before, I don't like auctions. <laughs> this next one, also an auction. Don't see anything too exciting, but uh, let's just look at these. So we got some magazines. Uh, we didn't get flashed with any of them. So Better Homes and Gardens, uh, or this is just Better Homes. So I've seen some people have some luck with those. I've seen some people that run a good part of their business off of just Better Home stuff for me. I got some magazines that are Better Home and Garden ones. Uh, I don't see any right here to show you guys. Yeah. So, sorry. Actually, wait a minute. I don't. Sorry, guys. Uh, but that is something that some people have had some pretty good luck with on just uh, niching down into is the Better Homes and Gardens and Better Homes uh, brands. But for me, that's not really my thing. Okay. All right. We have some books here. Uh, they really took some time to make that look pretty. I really appreciate that. Uh, his Praise. So that's a uh, Christian thing. The Music Hour. I'm guessing that's probably Sunday School stuff. Uh, songs in Service, I'm thinking is what that says, which would be probably a hymnal which is pretty cool. Ah, oh, I got a player piano. That's actually really, really cool. Um, I've been wanting a player piano. Don't have a big enough house for it, but I want a player piano at some point before I kick the bucket, just because that seems like the proper old person thing to have, and I want to be a proper old person. For me, guys, I drive a truck, and it's uh, old man tan is what you call the truck color. Uh, that's what everyone calls it, so I think it'd be fun to have a all the old things, because everyone calls me an old person. <laughs> I live like an old person. That might be why I sell antique books. I'm just an old guy at heart. Uh, so we do have some books though, um, just scrolling back up so we can see them. It looks like we have two photos of the same one. I'm just going to confirm that before we exit out. But uh, these books, just looking at it guys, I would say these books are from the 1920s to 40s, um, mostly 1940s. Some of them might be 1960s on the high end. Uh, of course there's some newer ones as well, but I'm looking at the more interesting ones which are down here. Uh, this one in the background also looks like it could be worth something. Uh, this I thought was interesting, putting it all over this, I'm going to call it a vanity, uh, but some more old books here. I don't see anything that really calls my name, but some definitely cool ones. Um, then back up to the one that I, we saw earlier. Here we go. Uh, yeah, this is a different shelf. Okay, so this I would definitely go to if I was going here. Um, Something on a revival, uh, some revival stuff, guys. If you guys can get books on Christian revivals, those I have found are worth a good chunk of money, uh, especially ones from like the late 1800s to the very early 1900s. I find that those revivalist books are worth a good chunk of money. So this one looks like it might be early 1900s at the back, very earliest, but uh, I can't really tell without seeing a little bit more of the book. Uh, it looks like it's in a little too good of condition to be too old, but some people keep track of their books and keep them in very good condition, so I can't really be too sure. Uh, but yeah, some of these books look like they are earlier 1900s, so that could be worth going to. Uh, just looking up really quick, so... Oh, well, I'm definitely not going to this, guys. It's from uh, Chickamauga, Georgia, so that that's a hard, hard, hard no. Um, I remember I mentioned I clicked the wrong one earlier. Yeah, because it's a sponsored one. They do that sometimes. So not going to that one, sorry guys. But uh, with that said and done, uh, here are the uh, three that we saved from earlier on in this. So just scrolling up really quick to get to these things. All right, we have a set of books. So uh, I actually just bought some of these uh, Portfolio C, Portfolio I, all these ones. Uh, it's a thing of just artist stuff and stuff like that. And I actually just bought a whole bunch of these. I have all of them over there. and. Uh, I don't know what they're worth just yet. I haven't like checked them out, but I bought all the ones that I could get at this one estate sale that I just I've been talking about so much. So I'll get back to you guys eventually on if these things are worth something or not. But I wouldn't be surprised if they are because uh, artist stuff can be worth a good chunk of money a lot of the times. Uh, of course, you're going to get flashed a couple of times as you're going through the stuff, but um, you can be careful, I guess. Uh, so some newer books here, just judging from what I can see. This one might be the oldest, and it looks like it might be the 1960s, based on the yellowing of the pages. Uh, here's some more books, nothing too exciting, ju uh, just some coffee table books. Some people have a good business of just selling coffee table books, guys. For me, I don't really specialize in that, but I've sold a couple over the years. Uh, going a little further, we have this shelf here which was a pretty cool shelf that actually piqued my interest. So this book I would be uh, looking at if I went here. These two, this one, uh, basically just the ones that look older is what I'd be looking at, but I would definitely look at 
the titles of all these different books just see what the subject matter is because certain subject matter is worth a whole lot more than other ones as you guys do this business you'll eventually find out what you're best at spotting all that sort of stuff for some reason everyone can spot things better than other people for just just random different things for me it's antique books is what i'm into but i can spot some other uh, topics so that's all i see for these things but here on the bottom right we have, it looks like these two books come in a slipcase. If it comes in a slipcase, guys, I, I buy it like 90% of the time because things that come in a slipcase are worth at least 20 bucks 99% of the time from my experience. Uh, we also have a set of books here, which is what I would also look at if I was here because as I mentioned in another video, sets of books are my bread and butter. They make so much money for me. So on to this next one. Looks like we have mostly newer books, but uh, there are a couple here that look like they could be from the 1960s. Uh, not too much older than that. Uh, this looks like could be the same bookshelf. Blue book. Yeah, blue book. Um, I think that's the same bookshelf. So moving on, I think that, oh, that was not it for this sale. Uh, okay, so now I remember. This is the one that I was most excited about, guys, uh, the sale, because of this set of books here. This looks a bit like the O. Henry books that I have right here, actually. Just looking at comparison. Um, it looks a bit like these O. Henry books. So uh, these books are worth a good chunk. Uh, looking a little closer, I don't know for sure if those are the same set, but uh, I would definitely be buying this red set if I went to the sale. This book of tan books, I would definitely be buying uh, these ones right here. These are, I would say, 1890s or 1880s based on um, their fine binding uh, spines. Uh, I've bought and sold several books that look just like these and have gotten me some pretty good money. Uh, these books here actually look like a set of books that I have, uh, which conveniently is just outside of reach, but uh, these I would be picking up. These I'd be picking up. Basically, every single set here I'd be picking up. In addition to this bottom shelf right here, I'd basically buy these without even having to look them up. Uh, this set right here in the middle, I'd buy it without even looking. This one here, like a lot of these I would buy just without looking, just because I know that they are worth at least a certain amount of money. Like this set here, guys, I would, I, I know for a fact that this set right here is worth at least 120 bucks. This one here, at least 120 bucks. This one here, at least $80. This one here, at least, I'd say potentially $200. When you guys do this long enough, you'll be able to just look at books, even on a grainier photo, and know, oh, this is worth some good money. So I would be buying those things uh, basically no matter what, depending on the price. So like if I could pay a dollar a piece, I'd buy them. So um, I believe this is down in Portland area. Uh, yeah, according to that, it is. And yeah, so it's too far into Portland for my liking, so I don't know if I'll actually go to this one. Plus, as I said, guys, my uh, entire warehouse area my basement uh is completely jam-packed right now so i can't really buy stuff sadly but um this definitely would be a place that i would be tempted to go if i was going here and honestly guys i still might because there's some really really stupid good sets here uh some more really good books here a couple here a couple here a couple here so like if this was out where i lived i'd be buying this no matter what since it's in portland that's a little bit of a red flag, plus I don't really have the space. Uh, here's another set. I mean, some really, really, really good books that are worth some good cash. But because it's Portland, as I said, I don't like going there. Plus, again, because it's Portland, and because this looks like it's a wealthier uh, household, they're probably going to be charging $6 a book for these things. And for me, yeah, I can still make some money on some of these books, but the amount of money that I'm putting into these books, it just is not worth it for my taste. And having to drive into Portland to spend $6 for a book, it's like, uh, maybe not, pal, but... It's a pretty cool sale. I mean, I, I am tempted. <laughs> I'm very tempted. So maybe, but maybe not. Uh, on to this next sale, though, the other one that we set aside for later. Got some books here. Uh, these look like they're older, uh, maybe as early as the 1880s. Uh, I can't really tell without seeing the pages, but they do look older. Here's a bigger view of the shelf. Here's some interesting things. I would definitely look at these ones on the bottom. They look like they're records, but they could very well not be. Another shelf. Doesn't look like too old of books, maybe a, uh, 1960s. Uh, some TVs. Oh, we already looked at that. Go away. Uh, some more books here, though. Uh, nothing too exciting, so just scrolling through really quick to see if we missed any books. I don't see anything. And that's a no, so on to this next one. Elegant and Vintage and Beaverton. So if you guys can see Elegant man I can't talk if you guys see elegant and vintage in the same uh, title for something you know that you're going to pay an arm and a leg and lose your shirt uh, to go to the sale most of the time so uh, personally I wouldn't go to this one just because of the title honestly like 
I'd be tempted to, especially with some of these books here. Uh, they're worth more money, but um, there definitely are some red flags when they put that and like collector and stuff like that. When they put all that in, that means that they know that some of this stuff is worth more, which means they're going to ask for a lot more money, uh, at least from my experience. So none of these books look too exciting anyways, just from what I can see. So we're not going to that one and uh, on to estatesales.org. I accidentally just exited out of it, but we'll deal. All right, so opening this up, I'm just going to basically look at these things and make sure that they aren't ones that we've already seen. So we've already seen this one. I think we've already seen this one, but I'll open it up. Uh, Coins and Classics. Uh, we've already seen that one in Washougal. Oregon City Estate Sale. Um, I don't know if we saw that one. Uh, Hillsboro. Don't know if we saw that one. Uh, this is an auction, so I'm just going to skip over it just because we already went through a couple auctions today. Uh, vintage Doll Collector. Probably not good, but going to open it up anyways. And uh, this last one I just opened up is actually for next week, as is this one I should have looked at that first sorry guys and that one's also next week oops sorry and all right here we go so let's just look at the photos for these three sales that are left uh, I think we've already looked at a couple of these potentially but I'm just going to scroll through so I don't see anything too exciting okay so VHS uh, some VHS books books <laughs> movies can be worth a whole lot especially if they're the Disney style ones so those could be worth going to especially if you guys know that business for me I don't here's a set of books I would say probably the 1980s um, I don't know if I've seen this particular set before so I don't know what they are but it definitely would be worth at least a hundred bucks from just what I'm seeing here so uh, could be worth going to this sale if it's somewhere that I actually like uh, I don't think I will go there, again, because I am so stinking full up on books and probably have at least a month worst, worth of listing left in me before I can buy more books, but, uh, oh, it's Canby. Poo. Guys, Canby is a country town nearish me. The people there are awesome people. Um, the sales I've been to there are absolutely astounding on top of that, so honestly, I'm a little bit tempted. Oh man, uh, but we're not going to talk too much on that in this video, so on this next sale before I start daydreaming about the Canby one, uh, don't see anything too exciting on that first one, so on to the next one, do 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 do, nothing too exciting, if you guys want a bench, you guys can get a bench, that'd be an interesting eBay niche is selling benches, uh, that'd be a lot for shipping, that'd be a lot a lot for shipping, man, <clears throat> wow, that is a lot of thread, so Something that I learned from my mom, uh, I actually took her to an estate sale as I was doing that business, is, man, we got some creepy doll parts. That's weird. Uh, but evidently thread, uh, she told me it can expire and get brittle and fall apart, which I never knew was a thing. <laughs> I was like, but it's thread. What? Uh, but yeah, evidently it can expire and fall apart, so probably is not worth buying sewing implements and all that sort of stuff if you guys have an ebay business uh, i'm sure there's someone that watches this video at some point that does have sewing business and does very well so be sure to correct me if you do know all the stuff about sewing but for me i'm very 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 uh mediocre in my sewing skills i can get the job done i can sew on a button but maybe sew a shirt but i'm not an, ex an expert in any way shape or form but uh with all that said and done though though guys uh thanks for joining me on this little work with me walk with me video uh I know this one might not have been the most exciting, but I thought there were some really, really, really cool books. Um, again, that can be one. Definitely, I'd be tempted to go to. I'm still a little bit tempted. I mean, I didn't need to see that. Now I saw it. Now I can't get it out of my head. But uh, you guys saw those other sales that I talked about, the ones that I got really excited about, the ones with the really cool sets of books. And I said this in other video guys, videos, guys, sorry. Uh, I do very, very, very well with sets of books, especially antique sets of books, or at least vintage sets of books. The reason for that, I think, is because people don't normally have the whole set of books left after 100 years or even 50 years. Books get lost with time. So if you can get a full set, that is worth a lot just because people don't normally keep around an entire set of books. Uh, encyclopedia sets, guys, I make so much money on encyclopedias. I actually haven't sold an encyclopedia for potentially a year now, which is sort of funny because it used to be such a big part of my business, but I just haven't found any for a long time. It's weird because when I first started, I was finding them left and right and I'd be bringing them home and having like stacks and stacks of encyclopedias and now it's like I don't have any. So I thought that was sort of weird, but uh, that's that for this whole video guys thanks uh thanks for watching be sure to check out one of my other ones be sure to subscribe there there or down below and i'll see you guys in the next one